This is your host, Danny, and this is a new Word Power episode from English Plus Podcast. Today's episode is a Word Power episode, so we're going to learn 10 new words in context. And our context for today is the surrender speech of Chief Joseph. Now, before we start talking about this, I have great news I would like to share with you. I have just published two series that are perfect for vocabulary building. The first series is Word Search Games and Activities. So as the title suggests, it is about word search, but it's not only word search. There are a lot of other activities that you can use to build your vocabulary in a systematic and fun way. And the second series is Crossword Puzzle Vocabulary Building. The same thing goes there, but with different activities and more example sentences, more in-depth ways to build your vocabulary in a way that you can use those words you learn and add them to your active vocabulary bank. Each series consists of 10 books, and each book has more than 1,000 words to learn. So the links are in the description. You can check them out on Amazon and take your vocabulary to the next level. Maybe you want to get one book for now. Maybe you want to get the whole series. So go ahead, take the link. Don't just take my word for it. Take the link. See it for yourself. If you really want to build your vocabulary, these books are just great. They're going to be very useful and fun, and I would like you even to share the word. Tell your friends about it. Tell your families about it. Tell everybody about it. Tell everybody who's really interested in building their own vocabulary. Tell them about this new series I just published on Amazon. I hope you like the books, and I hope you buy them. And of course, leave me a good review on Amazon would help others find the books as well. And with that being said, let me remind you that we have two links in the description of the episode. One that will take you to my website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com, where you can practice the words we're going to learn today and the other one will take you to patreon where you can become a patron support this channel and more importantly get premium episodes and premium worksheets like the premium pdf worksheet that i'm sending my patrons for this episode and with that being said let's not waste any more time today's topic is about the surrender speech of chief joseph but let me introduce you to the 10 words we're going to learn in this episode before i start talking about the surrender speech the 10 words are harangue, annihilation, eloquent, succinct, anguish, ferocity, ruse, petition, and indifference. So, these are very interesting words, and you would like to know how we can use these words in context. So, join me as we're going to talk about the surrender speech of Chief Joseph. It has been called the outstanding example of Native American oratory. Its simplicity and expressiveness stand in sharp contrast to the harangues so commonly delivered by orators of the late 19th century. Chief Joseph had led hundreds of Nez Perce men, women, and children on a 1,500-mile trek over mountains and rivers in the winter of 1877. Driven from their home along the Snake River, these native inhabitants of present-day Idaho and Oregon sought the safety of Canada. However, just a few miles from the Canadian border, the Nez Perce were attacked by United States troops led by General Nelson Appleton Miles. Facing the total annihilation of his sick and exhausted people, Chief Joseph accepted the promise of General Miles that the Nez Perce would be returned to their home if they surrendered. Chief Joseph spoke the following words to his people. I am tired of fighting. Our chiefs are killed. Looking glass is dead. The old men are all dead. It is the young men who say no and yes. He who led the young men is dead. It is cold and we have no blankets. The little children are freezing to death. My people, some of them have run away to the hills and have no blankets, no food. No one knows where they are. Perhaps they are freezing to death. I want to have time to look for my children and see how many of them I can find. Maybe I shall find them among the dead. Hear me, my chiefs. I am tired. My heart is sad and sick. From where the sun now stands, I will fight no more forever. This brief but eloquent speech by Chief Joseph is considered one of the most moving and memorable in American literature. 
in a few sincere and moving sentences, it succinctly expressed the suffering and anguish of the Native American and the ferocity of war. In the end, General Miles's promise was only a ruse. Chief Joseph and the surviving Nez Perce were not allowed to return. Until his death in 1904, Chief Joseph petitioned the U.S. government repeatedly to allow the Nez Perce to return to their ancestral home, but his pleas were met with indifference. The Nez Perce never saw their home again. So, this was our story, I will have to say, the sad story of the Nez Perce and Chief Joseph, and obviously we were talking about his surrender speech. Let me remind you again, the words we're going to learn in this context are harangue, trek, annihilation, eloquent, succinct, anguish, ferocity, ruse, petition, and indifference. So, don't go away, we're going to talk about these words and their meaning in context. Let me start with the very first word, harangue. H-A-R-A-N-G-U-E. Harangue. What does that mean? But first, before what it means, let's know how we use that in context. We said it's simplicity. We're talking about Chief Joseph's speech. It's simplicity and expressiveness stand in sharp contrast to the harangues so commonly delivered by orators of the late 19th century. So what is the meaning of harangue? A harangue actually is a long, forceful speech that someone makes to try and persuade other people to accept their opinions. So the harangue was so different. What is actually the opposite of Chief Joseph's speech. Chief Joseph's speech was short, to the point, and we'll get to this word succinct very soon. So that was our first word, harangue. And then we talked about the word trek, T-R-E-K, trek. What does that mean? Let's see how we use it in context first. We said Chief Joseph had led hundreds of Nez Perce men, women, and children on a 1,500-mile trek over mountains and rivers in the winter of 1877. Now, the trek seems to be a journey, right? It is actually a journey, but it is not a delightful journey, I can tell you. A trek is a long and often difficult journey, just like an odyssey or something. That is the meaning of trek. And that was obviously difficult. A lot of people died on the way. So that was our second word, trek. And we have the next word, annihilation. A-N-N-I-H-I-L-A-T-I-O-N. Annihilation. Now let's see how we use that in context. We said facing the total annihilation of his sick and exhausted people, Chief Joseph accepted the promise of General Miles that the Nez Perce would be returned to their home if they surrendered. So, obviously, Chief Joseph surrendered because General Miles promised him that if you surrender, I will allow you to return with your people to your ancestral home. Unfortunately, General Miles was lying. But Chief Joseph, facing the annihilation of his sick and exhausted people, had no choice. What is the meaning of annihilation here? Annihilation is the act of total destruction. He was facing the U.S. Army and he was no match. The people were sick, were tired, were exhausted. A lot of them died along the way or in battles earlier. He didn't have enough strength to stand and fight. So facing the total annihilation, the total destruction of his own people, Chief Joseph surrendered. So that was our word, annihilation. And you listen to this very short but eloquent speech. And that is our very next word, eloquent. E-L-O-Q-U-E-N-T, eloquent. Let's see how we use that in context. We said this brief but eloquent speech by Chief Joseph is considered one of the most moving and memorable in American literature. Now, when we talk about eloquent, what does that mean? Now, we use that word to describe speech or writing. Speech or writing that is eloquent is well expressed and effective in persuading people. So that is a word, eloquent. And we said that it was brief. And we have even a better word to say just brief. Because brief can be bad sometimes. Maybe you want more. But this is our next word. Succinct. S-U-C-C-I-N-C-T. Let's see how we used it in context. We said in a few sincere and moving sentences, it succinctly expressed the suffering and anguish of the Native American and the ferocity of war. 
So that is the word succinct. We're talking about his speech, obviously. In a few sincere and moving sentences, it succinctly expressed the suffering and anguish of the Native American and the ferocity of war. So when we talk about something that is succinct, that means it expresses facts or ideas clearly and in few words, as few words as possible, actually. So it might sound like brief, which is actually true. It is brief, but it is not only brief. It is not only short. It is short and to the point. It expresses the facts needed or the ideas needed as clearly as it gets with as few words as possible. That is the meaning of succinct. And within the same example that I just talked about, we have two more words that I want to tell you about. Anguish and ferocity. Let's start with anguish. Now, we said it expressed the suffering and anguish of the Native American and the ferocity of war. Now, what is the meaning of anguish, which is A-N-G-U-I-S-H? Now, anguish is great mental suffering or physical pain. And obviously, that was the case for those unfortunate Native Americans who were forced to leave their homes. And a lot of them died on the way to Canada and never got to return to their home, to their ancestral home. So that was anguish. It's great mental suffering and physical pain. That's the word. And here also, we talked about the ferocity of war. What is the meaning of ferocity? The ferocity of something is its fierce or violent nature. And when we talk about war, any war actually, we know that it's cruel, it's brutal, it's savage, it's violent. That's the essence of this word, ferocity. The ferocity of something, the fierce and violent nature of something. And obviously we're talking about war, which is always fierce and violent. And let me add most of the time for silly reasons, if not all the times for silly reasons. Anyway, let's continue with the last three words that I want to share with you in today's episode. The next word is ruse. And unfortunately, this word is used to describe General Miles's promise. Now, first, we spell the word R-U-S-E, ruse. How do we use that in context? We said, in the end, General Miles's promise was only a ruse. Chief Joseph and the surviving Nez Perce were never allowed to return. So what is the meaning of ruse? A ruse is an action or plan which is intended to deceive someone. Well, actually, General Miles deceived Chief Joseph, and it worked. Unfortunately, it worked. They were never allowed to return. They surrendered, but they were never allowed to return. So it was a ruse. It was a trick. And now we come to the last two words for today, petition and indifference. And we use both of them within the same context. We said, until his death in 1904, Chief Joseph petitioned the U.S. government repeatedly to allow the Nez Perce to return to their ancestral home, but his pleas were met with indifference. So here we have the words petition and indifference. Let's start with petition, P-E-T-I-T-I-O-N. Now, what does that mean? If you petition someone like Chief Joseph did with the U.S. government, if you petition someone in authority, obviously, you make a formal request to them. Like when you appeal or plead or something like that. That's the official word. The formal word is petition. But unfortunately, his pleas were met with indifference. I-N-D-I-F-F-E-R-E-N-C-E. Indifference. Now, if you accuse someone of indifference to something, you mean that they have a complete lack of interest in it. And the U.S. government back then was not interested in Chief Joseph's pleas or his people's pleas whatsoever. So these were our 10 words. Let me remind you again, the words were harangue, trek, annihilation, eloquent, succinct, anguish, ferocity, ruse, petition, and indifference. These are 10 interesting words that you can add to your own active vocabulary bank. And to do that, don't forget, there's a link in the description that will take you to my website, englishpluspodcast.com, where you can practice these words. Because remember, the only way to keep these words in your active vocabulary bank, to remember these words forever, is to practice. It's not enough to listen to me. Well, it's great that you're still listening to the episode. I do appreciate that. But trust me, it is not enough. You will not remember these words forever. You will forget them very soon if you don't practice. And there is also extra practice for my patrons. My patrons will also receive the PDF practice worksheet that doesn't only have practice for this episode, but also revision for the previous episode. So I will even take it a step further and I will help you remember the words that you even learned earlier. So become a patron and make sure you receive this PDF practice worksheet every time we have a word power episode on English+. Plus. 
And one more thing, don't forget about the books I just told you about. The links are in the description to the two series I just published on Amazon. Let me remind you again, the first one is Word Search Games and Activities, and the second one is Crossword Puzzles Vocabulary Building. Each series has 10 books, and each book has a thousand words or more to learn, in a systematic but fun way nonetheless. So take the links and just see the books for yourselves and maybe you can buy one of them or more. And now Christmas is coming soon, so you might want to buy them and send them as a gift to someone who's really interested, who loves word puzzles, games, and at the same time, vocabulary building. Now, with that being said, that will be everything for today's episode. But just let me say one more thing about the Nez Perce, because I understand some people say it in the old French way, which is actually a French word. It's the Nez Perce, that's how we say it in English, but originally the name is French. The French said that about the Nez Perce people, and actually it's a French word which is ne percé, which means pierced nose. So that is just for your information and for some people who might say that, no, it is not pronounced as Nez Perce, it is Ne Perce. Well, whether you pronounce it as Ne Perce, the French pronunciation, or the English one, Nez Perce, the most important thing is not about how we pronounce that, but the tragedy that happened to these people. And of course, today we talked about this great speech, sad but great speech by Chief Joseph and the words we learned, of course. Now, with that being said, this is your host, Danny. I would like to thank you very much for listening to another episode from English Plus Podcast. I will see you next time.